Good evening, good evening. Happy Sunday, everyone. Welcome, welcome, welcome. This is the live broadcast. We're doing a virtual lunch here for the book, Delilah's Lap, and we are super, super, super excited. So while we're still, we're going to get started in just a few more minutes. Uh, we're still waiting for people to come on in as we are doing this virtual lunch. Yes. yes. And for those of you who do not know who we are, <laughs> I am Nikel Baker, and this is my... I'm the husband, Terrence Baker. Yes. <laughs> yes. And you guys, he has written this phenomenal book, The Lila's Lap. So if you have not had the opportunity to go out and to purchase it, I am sitting here telling you now... It is going to be worth your while. Go out. Right now, it's available on all, basically yeah. all platforms. BarnesandNoble.com. Amazon. Amazon.com. Yeah. Walmart. I'm Walmart. Still, I'm still tripping over the Walmart thing. Walmart is like one of my favorite stores. So to be in Walmart is like an amazing thing for yes. me. It's crazy. Yes. <clears throat> God is doing so many wonderful things. And we want to get the word out about this book. So if you have, if you're just joining us, hit the like, hit the love. I also want you to hit the share button because we want to get this word out to everyone. We're live on Facebook. We are live on Instagram. Mm -hmm. So call your family, your cousins, your friends, frenemies, whoever. Let them know that we are live now and that we are talking about this amazing book that my husband has written called Delilah's, Delilah's Lab. Lab. Yes. Also, too, we want you to invite your friends as well because we are going to be doing some raffles hey. on today. Yes. So for those of you who have not gotten a copy, <clears throat> We are giving away two signed yes. autograph copies of Delilah's Lap. We are raffling those off. We are also, also going to be raffling off two $25 gift cards. Mm -hmm. So, yes, but the thing is, you have to stay tuned from beginning to end mm -hmm. if you are a winner to claim your prize. Yes. So, like I said, go ahead, hit that like, hit that love, hit that share button, because we are here live for the virtual book launch of Delilah's Lap. Hey, there you go. And let me tell you, she's not this, just this jipper because the camera is on. She's <laughs> like this all the time. I all know. the yes, she's a extremely happy person. So yeah, go ahead and do your thing. Go ahead, handle kind of your business. Kind of yes, I'm excited. Promote about, your man, girl. Yes, I'm excited about what God <laughs> that is thing. doing. That's what I'm talking about. In That's your what, life, well, in our lives. Amen. Yes. Absolutely. Yes, exactly. We are just super, super yeah. excited. Um, this is just the first of many to come. First of many to come, yes. It yeah, is. So yes. we're just super, super excited um, about it. So once again, we are here mm -hmm. live. We're going to get started um, in just a few moments. We're still waiting for people to log in. We're still waiting for you to share. Hit that share button. Hit the like. Hit the love. And tell everybody you know that we are doing a live virtual book launch for Delilah's Lab. This is an easy read book. I'm telling you, um, I'm not saying that just because I'm the proud wife, which I am the wife, but yeah. um, I read this book. Um, you're looking good, too. Though. Thank you, love. You're like looking a, well. Girl, well. like a big in the neck sound. Good. You're looking good. <laughs> we here talking about your book. <laughs> yeah, all right. I'm just... I'm just trying to keep myself. We're talking about your book, yeah, on well, the Lila's Lab. Lab. That's that's another whole page. Yeah, well, that we're not this camera being on things. Okay. Right. Behave. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'm just, you take you nowhere. Know, right? <laughs> <laughs> for those of you, thank you so much. Thank you so much for tuning in, and I hope that everyone has had um, a marvelous day, um, a blessed day. This is the day that the Lord has made, and, and we, we are just yes, we're yes. rejoicing, and we're just excited and happy mm -hmm. about what God is doing yes. mm -hmm. all right so once again hit the like hit the love hit the share button yes. so first of all um i want to um say husband that i am so godly proud of you you know okay. and what god is really doing um in your life um i know that you've been a writer for a long time you know um so i just want to say that i am very very extremely proud um, of what God has done in your life and what He has produced. Well, you know, Amen. Not started, I'm <laughs> yes, yes, yes. <coughs> All right. So, um, so we're just gonna start off. So, husband. Yes, wife. I'm here with the author, Mr. Terrence D. Baker. Yes. But tell those who do not know you. Tell them just a little bit about yourself. Um. Well, um, to tell you a little bit about myself, I am, uh, as she said. Yeah. Um, my name is Terrence Baker. I'm, mm -hmm. um, I'm originally from a little small town called Franklin mm -hmm. on the southern end of um, Virginia. We have 
three incredible kids. Um, mm -hmm. Matter of fact, one of our kids is here now. The other two are elsewhere. But the one that's mm -hmm. here now is the only reason I am actually on Facebook, Instagram, and mm -hmm. she's been teaching me how to do this stuff. And I still ain't got it yet. But if it wasn't for her, 90% of the stuff that you're seeing wouldn't be here. Mm -hmm. um, so, um, but we have three kids and we have yes. a total of nine grandkids yes. and I know we look young. I know, <laughs> I know that, but we actually have nine, a total of yes, nine grandkids. Yes, yes, we do. Yes. And one of them we got to be praying for because, um, the baby is a little sick mm -hmm. today. So uh, we'll be praying for Zai anyway. But, um, yes. And, um, um, we, uh, we left, um, Franklin and moved to uh, Maryland about 2014 mm -hmm. and I think it was about 2000. 17 18 we moved back to we moved to northern virginia so mm -hmm. that's where we're at now and this is where um god allowed things to happen and mm -hmm. um allowed the ability to um uh, allowed me the ability to find out that i had the ability to write a book mm -hmm. um and i and i say that because i didn't know and she said i meant she mentioned i've been writing before but you know the funny thing about god is a lot of times our our, our gifts and our anointings have become so a part of our life. God has so woven it into our lives until mm -hmm. we don't even recognize sometimes that um, we have this ability. Mm -hmm. And it's not until something happens that we find out, oh, I could actually do this. Mm -hmm. And that's actually exactly what happened to me because I never thought I would write a book. If you'd have told me last year this time I would be writing a book, I would say, you know, it's great. Anyway, but um, anyway, that's um, that's all I'm gonna share because we are we trying to stay within an hour. So, uh, yes, uh, yes, yes, yes. All right. So <clears throat> those of you who are just logging on, come on in. We are here doing this virtual book launch for yes. Delilah's lap. The Lila's lap was released on January, January the 1st. one. Yes. yes, so it That's is available. Start it That's is. Crazy. It start is. Yeah. So you can go ahead and get this book. This book <clears throat> is available on so many platforms. If you go and just Google The Lila's yes. Lap by Terrence Baker, yeah. several different platforms will come up. But the most common Amazon.com, Amazon, Barnes Walmart. and Noble, Walmart. And Walmart. I'm still yes. tripping yes. on Walmart. Yes, oh, Walmart. yes, yes. yes. And it's also available in ebook as well. Yes. So please, please, please and go Walmart. out. Walmart. Yes, <laughs> we got Walmart. <laughs> and no shout out to them, but we just just saying we just yeah, thank yeah. God for um all the mm. blessings. So, yeah. but we're gonna go ahead and delve right on in mm -hmm. um to talk about this phenomenal book. So, Terrence. Yes, baby. Delilah's lap. Yes. Yes. Why Delilah's lap? How did that come about? Well, um, Delilah's, the title came about, and I'm glad you started there, um, because that was something I was a little concerned about um, when I felt like the Holy Spirit led me to um, title it Delilah's Lap. And my concern was that, um, um, that at face value, someone would um, be misled and to think it's just another um, Samson and Delilah book, mm -hmm. you know, and I really was concerned about that. Um, but you know, if the Holy, I feel like the Holy Spirit led me, what you going to tell the Holy Spirit? No, I mean, that's, that usually doesn't work too well. Mm -hmm. And I've learned personally that it don't work too well. So anyway, I, um, went along with the title, but what I tried to do is I tried to use the cover and the picture in the cover to pull away from the illusion that this is just another Samson and Delilah book. So, um, the picture on the cover, the pictures here, they have meaning and definition. Mm -hmm. That's something um, that's behind everything that's there. Um, the first thing I want you to notice is the man that's on the picture. Now, when I use the picture of the man, I use the picture to represent man. Mm -hmm. And that's not man as an opposite of woe man or the separation of male and female. I was using man in the way that God used man um, from the beginning when he said, um, let us make man in our own image. Mm -hmm. When he did, when God spoke of man in that way, he was speaking spiritually. He spoke mm -hmm. of spirit. So man at that time was spirit. And so this is how I'm using man in this picture. So this man encompasses everybody. It's mm -hmm. not just a male. It's not a female. This man is the spirit of man, and it encompasses everybody. Mm -hmm. Now, when we move on, the next thing I want you to notice is the hair. Mm -hmm. The hair... If you notice, the hair is being pulled. Anybody who's been into or even seen a fight, usually between um, women or females, one woman usually 
uh, attempts to get control of the other woman's hair. Mm -hmm. The mm -hmm. reasoning yeah. for that, now I don't know whether you know that particular woman just knows the art of war or if it's just instinct, but one of the reasons that she tries to control the hair is because if you control the hair, you can control the head. Mm. And naturally, if you control the head, the body follows. So if the woman that has the hair, if she decides to pull the hair down, the head comes down, consequently the body goes down with it. Mm. If she pulls it to the left or to the right, and everything follows the hair. But she is able to control the other person by the hair. Mm -hmm. So with the hair in her hand, she can lead, this is the operative word, she can lead that other person where she wants them to go. Mm -hmm. So what I'm using here is his hair has been pulled is an indication of him being led. Mm -hmm. Now the question has to be, what is he being led from? If you notice over top of his head is the picture of the, of, of the cross. Mm -hmm. And most of us already know that anytime we see a picture of the cross, it's always an indication that Christ has died for our sin. Mm -hmm. So the cross represents Christ. Mm -hmm. Okay, so the next thing I want you to notice is the hand. Now the funny thing about the hand is that the hand is not connected to anybody you can see. The hand does not have a face, a body, so there's no way to know who the hand belongs to. Mm -hmm. So what I'm trying to express here is the hand represents anything and anybody. It does not have any particular person. Um, and now, with the, the hand, you notice that the snake is there. Mm -hmm. Now, biblically, whenever the word, the, 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 the snake is, is called upon, or whenever the snake is spoken of in the Bible, it's usually something nefarious or something deceptive, mm -hmm. something evil about the snake. Mm -hmm. Usually when the snake is mentioned, it's usually talking about Satan, mm -hmm. the devil, the adversary, the right. enemy. The serpent, yep. Now, the funny thing that I want you to pay attention to of the snake is the snake, as it sits here, it sits here calmly. It's not in a violent mode. His teeth are not flared out. He just sits there in observance. Mm -hmm. So basically, the snake is just basically watching. And the reason I was using that is to illustrate the fact that Satan does not have the ability to control us. Mm, okay. Satan can only influence us. He cannot control us unless we give him control. Mm -hmm. So I wanted to make sure the snake um, illustrated that, that not, nothing is being controlled. He is just watching in observance. Mm -hmm. Now, when we put the puzzle pieces together, and I try to, um, to give you a better explanation of what the picture is saying, is basically saying anything and anybody represented by the hand, mm -hmm. the enemy represented by the snake, mm -hmm. uses to lead representing by the hair, mm -hmm. man represented by the guy in the picture, away from Christ represented by the cross, is Delilah's lap. Mm -hmm. Now when you get that in real time, it basically says anything or anybody mm -hmm. that the enemy uses to lead man away from Christ is Delilah's lap. Wow. So that's my explanation for it. And I, I, I'm hoping the Holy Spirit don't get offended by that, but I just felt it needed to be explained that way, though. Wow. Now, you said a lot. I, I did. And you said mm -hmm. some, powerful, some powerful words because when you look at this book, people would get the misconception that, hey, this is a book just for a man because mm -hmm. those of you who know the story of Samson and Delilah, mm -hmm. it does talk about the relationship and right. him being led. So you think about that. But really, this is a book for everyone. Yes. Because at yes. some point or time, we've been led away from Christ. Mm -hmm. We've been yes. persuaded. Persuaded, you know, exactly. Perfectly um, perfect. yes. We've been influenced, mm -hmm. you know, and we find ourselves in particular situations, whether it's a relationship whether it's a job, yes, whether yes. it's parenting, exactly. or whatever that it is, you can find yourself in right. one of those situations. And that's where you find yourself in the lab. Yes. Yes, 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 yes. So those yes. of you, you said a lot. Good word, yeah, husband. Right now, so right. those of you who are just joining in, go ahead, hit the like, hit the love, hit the share button because we are talking about Delilah's lap. This is our virtual book launch for this book so go ahead hit that share button so we're gonna go ahead so okay all right 
We're just gonna give you guys just a little bit because we want you to go out and buy the book, purchase the book if you have not done so already. Mm -hmm. So I wanna go here um, to chapter two. Okay. And chapter two of the book is called The Power of a Woman. The Power of a Woman. Yes. Yes. And that, yes. That's a strong title, yes. you know, um, within itself, The Power of a Woman. Mm -hmm. So I just want to read a, just a little bit of snippet um, to go into The okay. Power of a Woman. Okay. So you say here, to start things off, I think we really need to look at who Samson was to demonstrate the power that Delilah had over him. Yes. So we know already that, you know, Samson was born, mm -hmm. you know, uh, born strong, you know, who God used, you know, to be a savior. Right, of the Israelites. For the yes. Israelites. So mm -hmm. we know that, right? Yes. Mm -hmm. But yet, we have the description of a woman mm -hmm. and all her power. You even yes, reference that. You know, being as the woman, you know, we're considered, you know, like the weaker vessel. Yes. You know, mm -hmm. in a sense. Yes. But yet, this woman that is considered like the weaker vessel mm -hmm. has so much power. Uh, yes. And yes. her influence. Yes. Right? Yes. And you go on to describe this woman, mm -hmm. you know, and all of that. And you say, often silent. Mm -hmm. With the potential of being deadly, a woman can have the appearance of a gentle stream that glides over rocks, creating sounds of beauty, mm -hmm. and at the same time, can have the destructive capability of a tsunami. Of a tsunami. Yes. All right. So, mm -hmm. we're talking about chapter two. Chapter two. The power of, the power a, of woman. a woman. Yes. And you even go on to say that Samson's strength was unmatched mm -hmm. by any man. Any man. By anyone. Any man. Except that of a woman. A woman. Yeah. So, talk about it. Okay. First of all, let me go in and, and, and though the illustration, the examples that she spoke of was about Delilah. Um, and, and Samson. Once again, this is not a book of Samson and Delilah, mm -hmm. but I do use them as references um, to express um, the, the points I'm trying to make. Now, um, in actuality, chapter two is actually my, my favorite chapter. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And one of the reasons it's my favorite chapter is because I feel like the title, um, it kind of emphasizes the title of the book. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Now, when I speak of the power of the woman, first of all, you have to understand that there is a complete difference between power and strength. Mm -hmm. What usually in most cases we, um, as men, we battle with strength. Mm -hmm. Whenever you usually, usually when you see two men in an altercation, there's, a, there's one trying to overstrength the other. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. But um, when you start talking about a woman, the woman has learned to use power to to take care of the things that she wants and the things that she needs. Mm -hmm. Now, when it comes to the power of a woman, mm -hmm. the ability to use that power goes so much further than um, than our ability to use our strength that many times we don't even recognize. Mm -hmm. Throughout the Bible, when the Bible is speaking of um, the story of Samson, mm -hmm. every time they try to come at Samson, with another man, they will come at him with strength. Mm -hmm. And the Bible explains that even when they came at him was about a thousand soldiers that tried to attack Samson, he was able to grab the jawbone of a donkey and kill soldier after soldier after soldier. And you know, something always puzzled my mind because I would think if this one man has killed 999 other soldiers. It seemed like one soldier would say, this is not the fight I need to be in. Mm -hmm. But anyway, that's another story. It just puzzled my mind. But anyway, um, the only time that they were able to conquer Samson is when they figured out that he had a weakness for women. Mm -hmm. So when he had the weakness for the woman, the woman already knew I can't attack him with strength. So Delilah attacked him with power. Mm. Now, um, one of my, if, and, I, and I illustrate this in the book, one of my favorite movies is the movie 300. Mm -hmm. 
in the movie 300, um, for those of you who have seen the movie, you already know that at the beginning of the movie, the Persian messenger comes in and speaks to King Leonidas. Mm -hmm. And the message that he brings to, to, to King Leonidas enrages the king. So the king threatens to kill the messenger. The thing you have to understand is that during those times, the messenger had a certain shield or a certain covering over him because the king recognizes you can't, um, he was basically untouchable. Mm -hmm. Usually the kings covered him and, and, and many times, especially in the Greek, um, um, Greek um, history, um, they also viewed it as the gods protected the messenger. Mm -hmm. So the messenger was somewhat un untouchable. Mm -hmm. So when Leonidas threatens to kill the, um, the messenger, he pauses. He has his sword drawn out, and he's pausing because he knows that there's a consequence of what he's about to do. Mm. Leonidas wants to kill the messenger with his strength, mm. but he pauses because he doesn't have everything he needs to kill the messenger. So in the pause, Leonidas turns and he looks at his queen. Mm -hmm. Now, the amazing thing about this is the queen does not have a sword. She does not have a shield. She is not in an aggressive posture. She stands there, and the only thing the queen does is nods her head. To me, that power by itself was amazing because when she showed her power, she gave Leonidas the strength to do what he wanted to do. Mm -hmm. And usually, and, and if you notice, when you put those two together, now, see, that's the amazing thing about having a, a, um, um, a help me mm -hmm. because... The power that you have, mm -hmm. connected with the strength that I have, mm -hmm. makes us invincible. Yes, it yes. puts it together and makes us unstoppable mm -hmm. when you connect your power and I connect my strength. Mm -hmm. Now, and this right here, some might consider this to be somewhat embarrassing, but you know, I'm not the only man that goes through this, but I'll put this out on the table. Before we moved here, mm -hmm. we, um, we had a house that we were living in, and our house had a long driveway. But at the, at the beginning of the driveway was the gravel rocks. And there would be days or, or whatever that I might be off from work or whatever on, on that day. My wife has this thing that she can't stand for dishes to be in the sink. Mm -hmm. It doesn't necessarily bother me. Hmm. I feel like the dishes is not bothering anybody. <laughs> and, 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 and I'm not bothering the dishes. So I feel like there is no need to bother what's not bothering anybody else. So a lot of times when um when she would go to work on my day off, um I have my favorite one of my favorite shows was Law and Order, mm -hmm. and Law and Order has this thing where they show episode after episode. Mm -hmm. Law and Order has about nine hundred and fifty two thousand episodes, and so I could lay on the chair all day long and watch Law and Order, but as soon as five o'clock hits, and I hear the tires rolled onto that gravel. Her power was about 30 feet away from me. <laughs> but because I know she had a problem with dishes being in the sink, her power was so strong that soon as the, rock, the, the, the tires hit the gravel, I would get up out the chair and I would go and stand at the, at least stand at the sink to make it appear. <laughs> That I was doing this. And I, I, I don't have a problem with letting y'all know. I'm, I don't have a problem because I'm not the only man that tries to do things when his wife comes around that he doesn't normally do when she's not around. Mm -hmm. So I don't have a problem with anybody know. But yeah, she had so much power mm -hmm. that only thing she had to do was drive her car onto the gravel. And when that gravel, when, when that hit, everything changed. Everything in my life changed because I knew I had to get the dishes. Dishes done because... Wife is at home now, so things change. But that's just a, just an expression of, of how much power mm -hmm. that the woman has. And the sad part about it is that many times women, women um, don't actually always tap into their power. That is true. And that sometimes, is true. and though we're speaking of Delilah mm -hmm. and her nefarious acts, and we're speaking of other, you know, um, we're using her as an example in the book. Um, there are also good things about oh, the power of a woman. You know, absolutely. the woman. I, I I can give you an example. I when I go to the gym, and if I go to the gym and decide I don't want to lift three hundred pounds today, mm -hmm. you see how I throw that number out there, right? But if I don't want to lift three hundred pounds today, I might be in there with my boys and say, "Yo, I don't feel like doing nothing." 
if she walks in, yeah. if she walks into the gym, not only am I going to lift that 300, I might try to throw another five on the end of it just to make sure she know her man can handle this weight. Yeah, it's okay. <laughs> Go kill yourself. I'll do it. But the average man will. Yes. The, even mean. from even from childhood, from, mm -hmm. from little boys. If you remember being on the little playground, the little elementary kids, the, the little boys might be playing together fine mm -hmm. until the little girl with the pigtail come up. Mm -hmm. Then all of a sudden they want to wrestle. Mm -hmm. They mm -hmm. want that is true. That, that little is girl true. don't even recognize how much power she but everything changes as soon as she walks Her in. Her influence. This is the power that's possessed that's within a woman. Mm -hmm. So that's that's one that's why it's my favorite chapter, I man. I think it expresses something that uh, a lot of times, as I said, many women don't even recognize. But um, when you put the two together, that power and that strength, mm -hmm. it makes everything else accomplishable. It does. It does. And so I want to say one thing, too, is that even though I know the story of Delilah is depicted in a, um, a negative way, she was mm -hmm. using her influence, but she played her position. She did. Because that was the role that God gave her. That that was her position. She had, she okay. Did. So... Um, I want to say this is that women we are strong we are powerful we are beautiful and to use that um influence in a positive manner mm -hmm. um and to build on the strength because we are wives we are mothers we are entrepreneurs <clears throat> you know and all of that so good stuff good stuff good right, stuff girl. so yeah so that is chapter two the power oh, of a woman the power right. of a woman so, as we are here, we're going to give away um, a raffle um, within the first um, persons who have come in. So, the first people, um, 10 persons who logged in, um, we're going to choose a number. And that person is going to receive a signed autograph copy of Delilah's Lab. Yes. Mm -hmm. Yes, yes, yes. And our lovely, um, beautiful daughter is going to be lit. So stick around. I'm going to be announcing that. So let's go here. Okay. Since we're talking about Delilah, mm -hmm. we're talking about that spirit. It is genderless. True. You know, we often find our heads in places that we necessarily didn't think we were going to end up there. Mm -hmm. So in the first chapter of the book, you talk about these three different egos. Yes. Mm hmm Okay. Yes. We have the overfed, the overfed, the underfed, the underfed, and the, and the want, want to be, be fed. fed. Yes. All right. So let's talk about these three egos and how it pertains to Delilah and okay. how we get tangled up in that. Okay. Um, in the three egos, um, first of all, let me um, clarify that um, because I wrote the book, these are my opinions and these are my feelings. So if somebody feels like there's more or even less, you know. Um, then that's fine, but this is just what I, I felt that, you know, was, um, that I put in there. But um, I described the three egos as um, the main three egos that are using um, within a man. Mm -hmm. The overfed, the underfed, and the want to be fed. Mm -hmm. Now, um, to explain each of the egos, the overfed ego is the ego that is um, confident. Mm -hmm. The overfed ego, um, he, has, he has no problem with seeing himself um, higher than he actually is sometimes. He has no problem um, looking at himself and telling his, and himself that, you know, I look nice today, mm -hmm. you know. The overfed ego is filled with confidence. Mm -hmm. The overfed ego really does not need the love. Mm -hmm. The thing is, the overfed ego likes to have the Lila because the Lila feeds him what he wants to have. The overfed ego likes to hear the things Delilah is willing to tell him mm -hmm. to get him to surrender to her will. Okay. The overfed ego a lot of times would remind me of the, the child who, um, who who's at home or the child who may be um, living in a house that's a, that's a broken home mm -hmm. and the mother lives on one end and the, and, and the father lives on another side of town. Mm -hmm. And when it comes to... Um, like feeding, for instance, and the child might wake the mother up and say, I want cake and ice cream for breakfast. And the mother would say, no, you're not getting cake and ice cream for breakfast. You're going to have these eggs and you're going to have some milk and you're going to have these things that are healthy for you. Mm -hmm. Now, mm -hmm. when he, the child goes to his father's house, we as fathers 
We are our normal whenever we're watching our kids, use I'm not gonna say whenever, but normally a lot of times when we're watching our children, we want to make sure everybody's happy. We want to keep the kids happy. We want to give them what they want as long as it keeps them happy. If it's sitting in front of the TV all day long, keeps them happy and keeps them quiet, sitting in front of the TV. So consequently, if the little boy goes to his father and wakes his father up and says, um, I want cake and ice cream for breakfast this morning. The father might look at the little boy and say, when you fix you some, fix me some too. So the little boy, when it comes down to the question of where you want to be, the little boy will, will probably more than likely say, I want to be with daddy. Why? Because daddy is giving him what he wants. Yeah. This is the same method that Lalala uses when she's dealing with the overfed. She gives the overfed what he wants. Mm. So he, it ain't not, not necessarily that he needs her. He just enjoys having what he wants. Mm -hmm. Now, the underfed is almost the opposite of the overfed. The underfed, in so many ways, needs a Delilah. Mm. Because Delilah has to build him up. Mm. The overfed does not need to be built up. The overfed is already built up. So, but the underfed needs to be built up. The underfed falls into a position where he usually... Uh, uh, he doesn't care what Delilah does. He mm -hmm. doesn't care as long as she's happy and as long as she's willing to stay with him. Delilah, uh, uh, the underfed doesn't care. And wow. a lot of times, Delilah would end up taking advantage of and using and abusing the underfed because she can't. Mm -hmm. Whereas the overfed would look at Delilah and say, I really don't need you. Mm. The underfed would look at Delilah and say, what is it that I can do? You know, as in, um, in the book I use as an example um, from the movie um, Coming to America. And, and uh, in the movie, you remember the, um, the, the, mm -hmm. the girl that... Um, whatever you yes, like. Yes, whatever you like. Mm -hmm. what, and she didn't care. I mean, because the, the prince was telling her, you know, hop, hop, hop on one foot. Mm -hmm. You know, mm -hmm. bark like a dog. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. A big dog. Yeah, so, and she didn't care. Whatever he liked. And so Delilah treats the underfed in that same manner. But the underfed um, does the same thing that, that uh, I think her name was Imani Easy, mm -hmm. something like that. And uh, he, he treats Delilah the same way, whatever he like, And he um, will do whatever it takes as long as Delilah is willing to stay in his life. Wow, yeah. and you know what? That reminds me of uh, when people tend to settle. That's exactly. You know, when exactly. you're underfed, it's yes. like you striving to do, you accept whatever, whatever happens, comes, whatever yes. comes my right. way. So right. right, even though you may not even like it, mm -hmm. but because you're so craving that attention, then you tend to just settle. Settle and, for whatever. Yes. And that's not just in relationship. Mm -hmm. That could be in a job. <laughs> yes. Yes, that's actually I mean, that's a perfect way to um to to explain it. Because um the un the overfed will be that person who goes to the job that has a degree, mm -hmm. sometimes two or three degrees. Mm -hmm. And the underfed is that person that just got in by the skin of his teeth. Mm -hmm. And so when if, if the boss was to hypothetically come to the overfed and say, well, maintenance is off today and we need the floor swept, mm -hmm. the overfed would look at him and say, wait a minute, uh-uh, uh-uh, uh-uh. Mm -hmm. You didn't hire me to sweep no floor. I'm not sweeping the floor. And if you don't like it, I will leave and get a job tomorrow. Mm. The underfed would turn around and say, well, I might not get another job like this. So mm. I will sweep mm. the floor if needs be. Whatever to keep the boss happy, this is what the underfed is going to do. The overfed is going to stand up for themselves and say, no, 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 no. No, mm. you got me twisted. No, this is not going to happen. So this is so that's a perfect example. I mean, I like the way you put that. That um, it can be that same way. So it's not yeah. just relationships. Yeah, it's also um, other things as well. Mm -hmm. But then we have we have the um, the want to be fed. Want to be the want to fed. be fed. Now that says something a lot with this. Yeah, itself. yeah. The want now the want to be fed is that guy we remember in school, and this guy would do anything he had to do with, to be with the cool kids. As long as he could get in with the cool kids, he would give up his lunch money. He would do their homework. It did not matter. Whatever it took to get in with the cool kids is what the want to be fed was going to do. Mm -hmm. Now, in many cases, the want to be fed a lot of times can't get a delight. Mm -hmm. 
He can't, not on his own merits anyway. We don't think he can. You don't, well, I usually don't think he can. Mm -hmm. He can't get a Delilah on his own merits. So in many cases, the want to be fed will become somebody who uses something he has to get a Delilah. Mm -hmm. A lot of times, um, the want to be fed will remind me of a sugar daddy mm -hmm. or either a sugar mom. Mm -hmm. He's going to use his finances wow. to get a Delilah. And that's what it takes. Now, he the, the, the thing about the underfed, the, the want to be fed, though, is the want to be fed um, practically uses Delilah just as much as Delilah uses the want to be fed. Mm. Because the want to be fed uses Delilah not just for sexual activity, but also he uses for the name. Mm. And the reason he's able to, to use it for the name is because her name gets him into places that he wouldn't be able to get into without her name. Wow. Because hey. he doesn't fit into that category to get in with the cool kids. Mm -hmm. So Delilah becomes his key to get into the cool kids. Mm -hmm. So now that he's in with the cool kids, the thing about the want to be fed is now that he's got into, into the group of the cool kids, even if the relationship ends with Delilah, he's bought the name. Mm -hmm. He has the name Delilah because he can always go back and say, remember when... I had Delilah. Because now he's in. Mm. But Delilah is using him more so as a financial gain or in, in some cases as an opportunity to gain a position, maybe on a job or something to that effect. Mm -hmm. But um, uh, if you notice that a lot of times when it comes to sugar daddies, you end up having a sugar daddy that is 72 years old who's dating a woman that's 21. And, and and please don't nobody take offense. You know, if if that's you, you know, by all means, do what you do. I ain't got nothing just to do with it. Just just keep on talking. Just <laughs> yeah. yeah. Flip to another channel. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, but um, that's usually the case of the want to be fed. Someone who's using he doesn't have the ability to gain a Delilah on his own merit, so he uses what he has mm -hmm. and to get the Delilah. Mm -hmm. And so, in many cases, when it comes to sugar daddy, it becomes something financial. And so what I think about that too is about when you're talking about that spirit of Delilah and those three egos, you got to be careful of seeking or running after something mm -hmm. and get yourself into trouble because you're overreaching or you know keeping up with the Joneses yeah. per se. Yeah. And that could be in any circumstance. Yeah, you know, is. cars, yeah. houses, jobs, you mm -hmm. know, trying to be something or portray something that you're not. Yeah, it can so, be very dangerous, yes. Yeah, dangerous, so yes. that spirit of Delilah can seep in mm -hmm. in any type of way. I think you can put that in any category. Any category, yes. You know, that yes. you do. Yes, I mean, and I, and I use it as male and female mm -hmm. um, because, well, obviously I'm a male, so, mm -hmm. you know, the way I'm writing is from a male's perspective. Mm -hmm. But yes, Delilah and, you know, these personalities can be used in any with anybody and, and practically anything as well. Wow, good stuff, good stuff. So if you're just joining us, yes, 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 we are here live. We are talking about Delilah's lab. This is our virtual book lunch. Yes, yes, yes. So, husband, I am going to ask okay. you to pick a number. Okay, all right. From 1 to 13. Okay, all right. Um, the, just any random number. Okay, um, I'm going to go with um, 7. Seven. Seven. All right. So number seven, number seven, number seven. My daughter has been keeping up with how many people who's been logging on first or seven. So number seven, you are the winner of our first signed copy um, of Delilah's Lap. And we will get you that name, number seven, number seven, in just a few moments. But you are our lucky winner, number winner. seven. Our first winner for a signed autograph copy of Delilah's Lab. All right, mm -hmm. yes. Oh, and I also want to tell you too, if you have any questions, because at the end, at the yeah, very, very yeah. end, mm -hmm. we will be having a question and answer period. So if you have any questions that you would like to ask, mm -hmm. um, this author extraordinaire, yeah, Mr. Terry Baker, you better um, say it. Then you better put say it in it. the chat, and um, we will answer your questions. So, all right. So we've talked about. The spirit of Delilah mm -hmm. is genderless because mm -hmm. we're talking about mankind yes. Yes. and how we can easily be persuaded. Yes. And it's really anything that pulls us away anything from Christ. Anything that pulls you away right? from Christ. Yes. Or doing what is the right thing, mm -hmm. right? 
So we talked about that. We talked about the power of a woman mm -hmm. and how, you know, that influence that she had. Yes, yes, right? Yes. We talked about the three egos, mm -hmm. right? So now I'm going to go to my favorite chapter in the book. Okay. Which you got is a favorite called... chapter? I do. Girl, you better get it to me. That's I what do. I'm talking about. I she do. read the book. <laughs> I do. So my favorite chapter in the book is actually chapter number five. Okay. And it is called the desire, the desire effect. effect. Yes. Mm -hmm. And not just to boost your head or, okay. or anything well, like you that. Go ahead and do that, girl. Don't, but don't hold um, that back. <laughs> but Lord, you. this one sentence Shout in out. the book. <laughs> This one sentence in the book really um, was very thought provoking, okay. and it just really made me sit and ponder. Okay. Um, and you said simply this: It says one of the most telling weaknesses mm -hmm. within the human life mm -hmm. is our un unwillingness yes. to control our desires. Yes. Yes. Because that's strong. That's 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 one thing to talk to have a desire, mm -hmm. but we we become selfish mm -hmm. and unable to control that. So mm -hmm. talk about, please talk about the desired effect. Okay. First of all, let me point out that there is nothing wrong with a desire. Mm -hmm. There's nothing wrong with having desires. Desires are natural. It's natural that if you are. Uh, driving a Honda Accord and a Rolls Royce passes you and you have a desire for that car. There's nothing wrong with that. Mm -hmm. The only time it becomes a problem is if you drive up into the Rolls Royce dealership and break the windows and take the car that you desire to have. Mm -hmm. So desire is not wrong as long as it's controlled. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So the, to, to me, the lot, desire would remind me of somewhat of like a pit bull. Mm -hmm. A pit bull is an aggressive, an aggressive animal. Um, he is strong. He is beautiful. He is loving. And many times he's given a bad reputation because of what the owners have done. But um, if you are walking a pit bull out and the pit bull sees something that he wants or he sees something, a squirrel or something that he decides he wants to go after, there's nothing wrong for that inner part of that spirit the, uh, of the pit bull to want to chase after that squirrel. Mm -hmm. The problem comes in, right, is that if the pit bull is not controlled, so if the, the, the owner is not paying attention and the pit bull gets loose, he can cause a lot of damage mm -hmm. because he has been freed and there is no control over the pit bull. Mm -hmm. There's nothing wrong with his feelings. Mm -hmm. He's not the one that's wrong. The one that's wrong is the one that was controlling him. So our desires fit in the same type of category. There's nothing wrong with the desire as long as they are controlled. Mm -hmm. So in the desire effect, I try to give um, ex examples and illustrations of the fact that there is nothing wrong with that. The fact that we all have natural desires. Yeah. The, yeah. The, the fact that the only thing we have, that the, as I said, the desires have to be controlled. Mm -hmm. um, desire as, as well as, and, and I will even cross the line and, and walk over into lust. As long again, again, now let me, before any of the church gets out of control with that word because the word lust um, a lot of times it's used so negatively. That's the only thing that people see when you hear that word. But I can lust after her all day long. As a matter of fact, while the cameras are rolling, I am in lust <laughs> mode right now. I'm sorry. So, so, but there's nothing wrong. I, I, I have a ring on the finger. So I can lust after you as much as I want to and nothing has to be wrong. You know, there's been times... We sit at church. Oh, my goodness. And I'm sitting there like, as soon as Jesus turns his back, um, I'm, as soon as Jesus looks away, um, Lord, if you don't mind, look at, okay, baby, look the other way for about two minutes so I can grab me up feet. Anyway, you know what I'm but, not but, the, <laughs> but the point is, the point is, as long as that lust is controlled, as long as those desires are controlled, is nothing wrong with having them. Mm -hmm. They can be beneficial. Mm -hmm. Desire can be a beneficial tool because if, at the, back to the example of the car, 
if your desire is to have one, and that pushes you and that promotes you and that um, gives you what it takes for you to do and go out here and, and do something extra or maybe get a second job or get a better job or even go to school, go get a degree so that you can acquire that, then that desire was beneficial. As I said, as long as the desire is controlled, it's not a bad thing to have. Mm -hmm. Wow. Yes. So as it pertains to um, where you're going in the book mm -hmm. um, with control yes. mm -hmm. um, and being able to handle, mm -hmm. you know, yourself, yeah. you know, and all that talk. Yeah, that's that's what I was saying when I, when I used the word unwillingness. Um, um, as a matter of fact, um, now that I think about it, I pr probably should have put that word in bold print um, because that is where all our problems started from day one. All our problems started from an unwillingness because as I explained from the beginning, the enemy doesn't have the ability to control us, but he does have the ability to influence. So therefore, if there was a point that, that, um, that Eve would have looked at the serpent and controlled her desire, because the only thing the serpent did, the serpent didn't, didn't con her, he only asked her a question. Did God actually say that? He just made her think. He said, wait a minute, what? Yeah. Maybe, maybe he did, you know. You know uh, but, um, but the whole thing was, if she had controlled her desire, then she wouldn't have turned to Adam. If Adam had controlled his desire, then we wouldn't be in the mess that we're in today. We wouldn't be sitting here. Um, um, you know, having to work like we work and having to uh, uh, go to the jobs and, and deal with the things that we deal with because if Adam would have just controlled his desire, but because he didn't, we're in the positions that we're in. And, and now, you know, we, um, as I explained in the book, the funny thing is, um, 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 you know, our daughter, and I, I used her in the book, um, she went through 32 hours of pregnancy. Um, giving birth to you know, 32 hours of labor, giving birth to our, um, our newest grandson. And, you know, I can't even imagine going through that, you know, because I get a headache and my headache be like two minutes long. I say, uh uh, give me some Tylenol or something. You know, there's been times my head was hurt so bad, you know, that I was almost questioning cocaine. So, you know, somebody do something about this. I'm only kidding, don't take that serious. But the point is that she went through that pain. The point that I expressed in the book is the reason that she's going went through that those 32 hours, and not just her, just women in general, is because of the punishment. This was Eve's punishment. Mm -hmm. And you know, um, what was logical to me, as I expressed, what was logical to me, if God gave that as a punishment, it was an indication that you were supposed to have babies without any pain. Mm -hmm. Because it couldn't be a punishment if it was part of his plan. So if he used it as a punishment, then obviously the opposite is what he actually intended. So a lot of the, the, the big, the thing that we're dealing with, I mean, the situation that we're in just basically falls in a position of we're reaping the consequences of somebody being unwilling mm -hmm. to control their desire. Wow. Yeah. Yeah. Don't, don't, don't keep looking at me like that. I'm telling you, she's looking at me in a way that I'm going to be unwilling to control. Go ahead on. The loud is loud. Yes, yes, yes. Just the loud is loud. Somebody yes. <laughs> so, right so, yes. On <laughs> Boy. <laughs> Anywho, so, um, yes. We've hoped that you have picked I'm, up something <laughs> that we, you have, you have, you have, you have told me. Oh, God. Um, <laughs> throw me off. <laughs> but um, at any rate, um, the loud is loud. <laughs> it is a page turner. Thank you, lady. Um, Thank you. There's a lot of good information in all of that. Mm -hmm. So let, let me let me let me put this out here too. Also, um, because um, and I, and I think this is very important. Um, I I my name is on the book. Um. But I want to make sure it's understood and, under, and, and that it's known that I don't want credit for writing the book. When I started writing, I asked God, you know, Holy Spirit, speak through my hands. Mm -hmm. and, and one of the things I've learned about God is, is as long as we give him the credit of the work, yeah. he allows us to reap the benefits. Yeah. You know, so whatever uh, um, financial proceeds might come from, 
God allows me to receive that as long as I'm willing to give him the, uh, the, uh, the, the credit for it. And I think a lot of times, especially in the church, we lose our benefits. Mm. We lose our benefits because we end up trying to take credit for something that the Holy Spirit done, the Holy Spirit gave you. If you notice, using the example of Samson, and oftentimes, you know, and, and uh, this is something that's always drove me crazy. Um, down through the years, because we always hear that Samson's strength was in his hair. I completely disagree. And I disagree because the Bible completely and makes sure it expresses every time Samson did something tremendous, it said the Holy Spirit came upon him. It didn't say because his hair got longer. It said the Holy Spirit came upon him. Every time he did something miraculous and super strong, it said the Holy Spirit came upon him. The Holy Spirit is where his strength is. Mm. And, I, and too many times we give, we give uh, credit where credit is not due. Mm. And I want to make sure, it's no, thank you, baby. I want to make sure it's known that I don't want credit for writing this book. Mm. God has let me put my name up here. Mm. But I believe the Holy Spirit wrote this. As a matter of fact, I believe this so much so that even after I wrote the book, and after uh, it was written by my hands, I, I sometimes will go back and reread what it what it was written, and I'd be like, well, Holy Spirit, good God, boy, you wrote that thing. That boom, boom. That, I mean, because I'm a person that likes stuff that's kind of deep. You know, I like stuff that, that brings a understanding to something um, with some logic. Mm -hmm. You know, so um, there will be times I will stop mm -hmm. and say, wow. You know, Holy Spirit, you're amazing. Yeah. You, know, you did your thing, you know. <laughs> But, um, but I just want to point that out. Mm -hmm. I, I, my name is on the book, but the Holy Spirit is the reason for this. This is not me because I don't have the ability to write this. I don't have the ability to write this kind of way and to say these kind of type of things, but the Holy Spirit does. Mm -hmm. So anytime that I want to make sure that's expressed, anytime that we do something, give the Holy Spirit his credit. Mm -hmm. Give him his give credit. Him. Yes, give him the glory for what he's done. And he's going to let you get the benefits. Mm -hmm. So so that's I just wanted to point it out. Go ahead on, girl. Go ahead on before I get caught up in my stuff. Amen. Since we're talking about yes. the title mm -hmm. um, of the book mm -hmm. itself and um, the name. Uh -huh. So for those of you um, who are following Terrence um, mm -hmm. on social media, on Facebook, yes. um, on Instagram, you'll see that it's coming under the name Devon. Yes. Right? Yes. So tell them, the, tell our viewers just a little bit about the Devonsky and the Devonsky brand. Okay. So that they know okay, right. what they're saying and how to follow and read you. Okay. Um, well, first of all, Devonsky is my middle name. Mm -hmm. uh, now, um, I don't know if my mother was high off painkillers. <laughs> Um, but whatever painkillers they gave her no when she was body. giving birth to me, <laughs> they gave her the same thing when she was giving birth to my brother because she named my brother Davinsky. So I don't know where these things came from. And consequently, when I was younger, um, I hated my middle name mm -hmm. because I used to get picked at because my middle name was so different mm -hmm. and it was so odd. And so um, I got picked at by my middle name. Mm -hmm. And so I hated it. Mm -hmm. And it wasn't until I became an adult and started coming into my own that I began to accept the fact that I was different mm -hmm. and I was unique. Mm -hmm. um, as a child, my grandmother used to always tell me, she used to always say, she said, baby, you're never going to be able to fit in. You are not because you are called out by God. Yeah. And anytime you're called out by God, you're not going to fit in with the rest mm -hmm. of the crowd. I tried to defy grandma's word. Mm -hmm. And I tried to fit in in my teenage years. I tried to follow my friends and I would drink and I would smoke and I would do all these other things that I didn't even enjoy. There was even times I would go to certain friends and be like, you know, does this stuff actually taste good to you? Mm -hmm. You know, and then different ones would give me their reasoning and everything. But it wasn't until I became an adult that I started accepting who I am, that I'm unique, I'm different. So consequently, I don't drink. I'm not a drinker because I don't like alcohol. I don't knock anybody who does drink. You know, that's your thing. That's between you and, and whoever. But I don't knock anybody who does drink. I don't knock anybody who does smoke. Um, the Bible says judge not. So therefore, if that's your thing, that's your thing. I personally don't like the taste of alcohol. And I've had friends that tell me, you know, when I put this in here, you're not going to taste it. If I put this food, I said, no, dude. I taste the alcohol every single time. Mm -hmm. There's nothing anybody has been able to do in all my 50 years 
to mix the alcohol with something else that I couldn't taste. I taste the alcohol every time. But anyway, so um, accepting the fact that I was different um, caused me to be able to get into the place where I accepted my middle name. Mm -hmm. And so my middle name is so unique and so different. Um, I, had a, I had a friend of mine, um, Dr. Defetz um, Claude, um, he taught a lesson, he taught something in my church that I came from, um, that I was born into. And um, some years ago, he taught a lesson on names. Mm -hmm. And one of the things that he was explaining is that every time somebody says your name, mm -hmm. they're saying the definition that is attached to it. Mm -hmm. And so, you know, so consequently, if your name is, you know, means stupid, every time somebody calls your name, you know, they basically calling you stupid. You know, I'm, I'm sorry. But anyway, um, so when I began to accept um, my name, I did not go into the books to look and see what somebody else decided what my name means. Um, because we're taught and we know that the word said there's power in our tongue. So what I had decided, I've decided to do is that I've given myself the meaning of my name. So you don't tell me oh, what my man. name means. I'll tell you what my name means. My name is Devonsky. It means unique. One whom the favor of God seeks with anticipation to bless. Come on, now. That's what my name means. So now, consequently, what that means is that every time you say my name, whether you like me or don't like me, whether you hate me or whether you love me, whether you're a friend or foe, every time my name is called, I believe the Father sits on the throne and said, I heard somebody call his name, bless him. Mm -hmm. And the angel might look at God and say, wait a minute. They called him stupid when they called his name. He said, uh-uh, wait a minute, I don't care. He's following a principle. Mm -hmm. And the principle was there was power in the tongue. So if his name means what he said his name means, then I don't care what they said. Bless him because they said his name. So somebody out there say my name. And the good part about God is he doesn't require you to allow the, the, the somebody else has to say it. I can speak it myself. Mm -hmm. So if you don't say my name, I can get in front of the mirror all day long and say Davonsky all day long. Look at that. And later on tonight, she gonna be saying my name. It, that's, that's what we're going. That's what we're doing now, baby. Let's go ahead. On. <laughs> I'm sorry. I'm sorry. But you, you wore the dress. You, you, you wore the dress. <laughs> it's not my fault. She put on the dress. You know so. Don't blame me for what you do. <laughs> and I gotta get myself <laughs> But no, Dubonsky is the brand. Yes, so is the how brand. can people follow you? Um they can follow me. Um uh, it's it's unfortunate that I have to sit here and read off a cue card to tell you how to follow me. But um, as many of you, some of you might know, mm -hmm. I just got on social media December yes. of last year. And so all of this is brand new to me. I'm still trying to get accustomed and used to it. Mm -hmm. um, so I don't be, I, I don't often remember where I have to go. So put it up. Um, so they can reach me on social media by T.Davonsky. T. And that's spelled T.D.A.V.O.N.S.K.I. Yes. yes. Even if you spell my name. You just bless me. Somebody do it. Spell my name. And what else? What else is, is that it, baby? So <laughs> that's how you can find him on social, social media. media. Yes. So and one of our twenty-five dollar gift cards. Yes. Um, for those of you who may um have been following, we're giving a twenty-five dollar gift card. Mm -hmm. If you can name, put in the chat the first person who can put in the chat. The title of just one of Terrence's daily inspirations. Mm -hmm. It doesn't matter which one it is. He has several out there. Usually yes, yes. every day, yeah, every yeah. morning, yeah. Um, the Holy Spirit, the Lord gives him something to um, post on social media, to post on Facebook, to post post on Instagram. Mm -hmm. um, yes. So if anyone, whoever the first person is, you will be the winner of a $25 gift card. Mm -hmm. um, yes. If you can just put the title of any one of the inspirations that he has had. Yes, All right. Yes. So, Mr. Baker. Yes, baby. My love. Mm -hmm. What is the final takeaway that you would want the readers, the viewers, mm -hmm. to know from the life? Okay. and to gain out of Delilah's life? Um, the one thing I th I think I would want um 
the readers to, to get out of it is that there's consequences behind everything that we decide to do. Mm -hmm. Everything we do is a choice. Mm -hmm. And every choice we make has a consequence. Mm -hmm. So one of the things I want to regain from Delilah Snap, and most of the time when you have somebody that you tell don't do something, they actually do it because you say don't do it. Mm -hmm. but, um, but that doesn't stop the fact that we have to have somebody that comes in and says, don't do this. This mm -hmm. is the wrong path mm -hmm. or the wrong thing to do. Mm -hmm. um, but um, the one thing I do want, you might have to do that. Um, the one thing I do want um, to be that of this is that we have to begin to think about the consequences of what we're doing. Mm -hmm. Because many times during those consequences, when we do these things, mm -hmm. the consequences a lot of times doesn't just fall in our lap. That's true. A lot of times it falls in the lap of innocent bystanders. Yeah. Somebody that had nothing, absolutely nothing to do with the choice that you made, mm -hmm. but they're reaping the benefits of That's what true. you did. So, so, true. so what I want to want um, readers to get out of uh, out of the lot is not is to begin to start thinking about what you want, what you're going to do, and the consequences mm -hmm. of what's going to come behind it. Mm -hmm. In many cases, we already know what um, whether what we're doing is right or mm -hmm. wrong. That's true. And it's just a lot of times we just decided that we are willing to go ahead and do what it is that's wrong. And most of the time we don't remember or don't take the time to think about the persons or the persons who are going to also reap the consequences of what you decided. Mm -hmm. You know, um, um, a lot of times I, I joke with my mother and my mother, um, for, for those of you who don't know me, um, I'm about five seven, you know. Except when I wear my Nike boots, my, I love my Nike boots because my Nike boots. Are, after my Nike boots, I'm about six two when I put my Nike boots on. Oh, but uh, I'm about five seven, and so a lot of times I joke with my mother and say, you know, you could have at least married somebody or 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 gave birth to me by somebody that was at least five ten, five eleven, so that I could get some kind of height out of this. But um. The point I'm trying to make is that is the consequence of her um, um, marrying my father, who was, you know, of a shorter nature, mm -hmm. you know. So um, um, that that's one. That's the point I'm trying to make is that many times there's consequences behind other that other people are um, accepting or have to accept because of a decision that someone else made, and I think that's really unfair. And, you know, so um, that's the one thing I think I will try to encourage the readers to get out of the, the book is put some thought into what you're about to do because somebody else might be reaping that benefit that they had nothing to do with. Absolutely, absolutely good stuff. And also, too, I know that in the book you, you talk about one of the chapters called The Breadcrumb Trail. Yes. Mm -hmm. And that basically talks about how even though we mess up, mm -hmm. even though we find ourselves in a particular situation and we may find ourselves in Delilah's lap because mm -hmm. we've all, all been there at some point or another right. at some point in our lives. But there's always, always, always yes. a way to be led right. back, mm -hmm. to ask for forgiveness mm -hmm. and to to get yourself together and to right. make it right. right. So, and I call that the breadcrumb trail. Yes, absolutely. And, that, so. and that, that is that trail that leads you back to the Father. Mm -hmm. and, and in many cases, we, we know what that trail is, and but um, um, we have that. Mm -hmm. You know, and a lot of times, I know for me personally, um, without being too in-depth into it, I know for me personally, the breadcrumb trail was taught to me by people from the old church. That old church that we used to complain about because they had so many rules and so many regulations. And the church that my grandmother had me going to church, I would go get up uh, on Sunday morning. We had to be at church about 8, 30, 9 o'clock. And we would stay at church. We wouldn't leave church sometime until after 12. Mm -hmm. You know, so we'd be at church all day long. Mm -hmm. And, you know, as a child, that's something that, you know, you hate. You know, everybody else is out having fun. You you know, you got to go to church, you know. But I think uh, I thank God for my grandmother and that old church because they taught me the bread come trail. It taught me how to get back to God after mm -hmm. I done screwed up and over Amen. and over and yes. over again. No matter what I did, no matter how mm -hmm. bad it was, I knew that the breadcrumb trail was there. Yes. And the breadcrumb trail is always what led me back mm -hmm. to Christ. Amen. 
good stuff. So I hope you guys have enjoyed um, this virtual book launch. Like I said, this is the first um, of many, mm -hmm. but I'm going to take this time now to see who our number seven person was, who we have for number seven. Tanya Jones. Tanya Jones. Hey, Tanya Jones, you are the winner of a signed autographed copy of Delilah's Lap. Yes, yes, yes. Yeah, so girl. we will be putting that information. Yes, Tanya, I know you, but still, I want you to email me your um your address to um our um to our um email address, which well, she, is she, she, she should be able to be able to. yes, which is Info dot Devon D A V O N S at gmail dot com. And I'm gonna ask my daughter if she can put that in the chat. Uh for all of you who are going to be oh, the she, winners, she put that, uh, to put that in the chat. Um to put, to put that in there that you are going to send us at that once again, that is info dot Devon's D A V O N S at gmail.com. Tanya, yes, yeah. yes, yes, yes. We will begin your autograph um, copy as yeah. well. And also, um, I want to point out before we, we um, sign off, because we got to do another what's in it too. But um, I want to point out that I'll be doing my first um, podcast interview. Yes, yes, that's uh, yeah, coming up yeah, on the film next yeah, Saturday. Yes, I'm going to be um, on somebody's podcast. Yes, yes. 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 It's uh, with Carissa, um, Carissa Epps. Mm -hmm. On uh, what is it called? The, the, the silly, silly girl, girl C. C? Yes. Yeah, I'm gonna be doing my first podcast. So you know, um, on the fifth of February on YouTube, it's gonna be on YouTube. Yes, so go yeah, to it's YouTube. YouTube. Yeah, it's gonna be a fun. Now, I'm I'm really excited about that because um, um, that's you know that I feel like that's big now. That's big it stuff is. there. You know, so I mean, God is doing some amazing things, and yeah, I mean, it's it a is. beautiful thing to watch. Um, yeah, that's that's the, what it's you know, almost you know, know to me it's almost like watching as your house is being built. Mm -hmm. This is your dream house is being built and things are happening, and you get to go out there and take snap pictures of them putting the the laying the foundation and then putting up the the side wall and them putting the the, the electrical wiring in. You get to watch everything. So I think it's, it's it's truly amazing to me to watch God as He's starting to do things in my life that I never would have thought he would do. So it's, it's almost, for me, almost like watching the house being built, you know? Mm -hmm. So um, it's, it's, it's fun. But you know, one, one of the things that really sticks out in my mind is my bishop, um, Bishop Joel Peoples. Yes, shout um, out to City, City of Praise, Praise yes. family ministry. Yes, City of Praise yes family best ministry. church on the planet. Yes, yes. shout yes. out to Bishop Joel Peoples and, and my pastor, pastor Yolanda yes. Peoples. Yes. But, um, but they, they have said on several different occasions that the blessings will come one on the heels of yes. another. And they said sometimes the blessing will be coming so fast mm -hmm. that it will make your head spin. Yes. And you know what the yes. crazy part is, is that um, well, my, my daughter is extremely organized. And um, a lot of times we have our little business meeting. And she um, she's telling me, okay, Dad, we need to do this, and we need to do that, and we need to have this, and on the on the, the um, three months from now, we need to have this, and six months from now, next year I need this. And it's like I'm sitting there and I'm like, hold up, hold up, hold up. My head is literally swimming. Stop. I don't need to know no more. And sometimes I even tell her, don't even tell me. Just tell me where I need to be and what I need to do. I don't need no dates. Just tell me where I need to go. That's all I need. Because it was coming. Sometimes the stuff is coming so fast. That, but it just reminded me of their words that they said. You yes, know, and that's that how was come so fast. Yes, yes, yes absolutely. Yes, so, yes. and I know that my pastor, she's been talking about a tsunami of blessings. Yes, you know, because mm -hmm. she is saying that you know, because we're in a year of newness, a, a year of revival, and things are just just coming. So yes. I'm just glad. So as we're talking about that, before we, um, and my daughter's gonna announce um, who answered the question for the twenty five dollar gift cards, um, but. Tell us um, what's what you got going on. What's what's upcoming? Oh, what's okay, good, good. Okay, I'm glad I'm, I'm glad she remembered it because I forgot. But um, anyway, um, um, one of the things that we are currently working on, I'm I'm currently working on my second and my third book. Mm -hmm. Um, I will be trying to have my second book out um, at least finished by the middle of the year. Mm -hmm. 
And I want to have my third book at least finished by the end of the year at worst case scenario, first part of next year. Mm -hmm. So um, that's one thing is um, because God has opened and uh, given me the uh, understanding that I can do this now. Mm -hmm. um, this is one of the things that I'm doing. I'm, gonna, I'm writing another book. Um, and also another thing that, that God has allowed us to um, be a part of is a, it's a small, intimate uh, men's ministry. That um, that um, that God has given me, and um, it's just a small group of, of of guys, and we come together um, at a certain time of the month, mm -hmm. and we have guy conversations, and uh, um, and 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 we have a prayer. Mm -hmm. Then we're praying together over our families, mm -hmm. over our lives, mm -hmm. over our jobs, and over you know just the um, just to try to get to the point where we're actually in line with what God has um, mm -hmm. um, set up for, so for us to be mm -hmm. as, as head. So, um, so we have that going on. And then, of course, you know, we have, we're in the birthing stages of uh, marriage ministry mm -hmm. that we're, we're doing together and that God has um, started off and we're in early stages of that. Mm -hmm. And um, what else am I doing? Is, 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 is <laughs> well, yeah, even that, I mean, else, and yeah. we're working in and some ministry. other things that that that, um, that we're not um, we can't yeah, say um, right now because it's in the early breath right. stages. Yeah, um, so some things I can't is, say right now, but yeah. um, of yeah. what he's doing in our life yes. as well. And I know a lot of you may have seen um, the live that I did. Well, the live when I went live for the different special events that my husband did for me to mm -hmm. show yes. um, his love and affection. So yes. we do have some things in the works. Um, with that as mm -hmm. well, so which is which is also something else that um, God revealed. I, I I do believe that as much tragedy has come out of COVID, mm -hmm. God has allowed some miraculous things to come out as well. Mm -hmm. You know, so um, God opened up um, uh, an ability within me that I didn't know I had as well. I've always considered myself to be somewhat romantic, but some of the things that I've done um, since COVID has hit. Um, um, with creating a restaurant, you know, and and, and building a, um, a a lounge area that and and you know I, I love the the um, the violinist that came in there. They, but these are all things that you know have came about because of COVID. And I think um, God does those things. My, uh, as a matter of fact, um, even my youngest son, mm -hmm. you know, he um, during the COVID period. Um, he came out with his own clothing line. His clothing line is yeah, called shout out to Keontae. Yeah, kind of shout out to Keontae. Mm -hmm. His clothing line is called Limfat. Limfat stands for Love, Love Me from, from a Distance. distance. Yeah. Yes. So these are things that that God has allowed in our lives. So um, I'm really thankful to what He's doing in our lives, mm -hmm. as well as the lives of our family. Mm -hmm. You know, because we we also have found out that my daughter has a special anointing when it comes to marketing. She has done an amazing job. She yeah, has she really has. blown my mind with her ideas. And she is so, her thoughts are so far ahead. Mm -hmm. You know, that it's just, I, and she told me, she told me one time, she said, that is just something I did. I mean, I said, no, baby, that's an anointing. Mm -hmm. You know, and, you know, like I was saying earlier, God so is so good at what he does that he weaves our anointing in our lives mm -hmm. and we get to the point that we look at the situation and say it's just something that I do mm -hmm. and not even realize this is an anointing that yeah. God gave you when God was training David David didn't know he was being trained mm -hmm. David was in the field doing nothing but watching the sheep mm -hmm. but God was training him yeah. for Goliath mm -hmm. and David didn't even know so God sent the lion and he sent the bear for David to practice that's all the lion and the bear was, was practice. Mm -hmm. So consequently, when he stood before Goliath, Goliath was not a giant. Goliath was a tall man. Mm -hmm. That's all Goliath was. Mm -hmm. So David was able to look at the situation and say, uh, what do I get if I kill this man? Mm -hmm. You know, and, and Psalm Solomon and, and the soldiers told him, this is what you get. You get this, you get that, you get that. He'll say, God, I got this. I'll take care of this. Mm -hmm. But nobody else dared to go in the field with Goliath because they had not been trained. Mm. They had been trained for the normality. God had trained David for the odd. Mm. So God had prepared David because when you think about it, if you fight a lion and kill a lion, then fighting a man ain't no big deal. Mm. So, you know, so anyway, I know we got a great girl and it's time to run out. But anyway, so um, uh, let's, let's slow down before I get caught up 
in uh, this thing that I'm doing. Yes. Today. They, they, those who don't know, I, I can talk. Oh, yes. I, I can talk. My mother has given me a gift to talk, and I will talk if you don't stop me <laughs> before before I get started. You know, I uh, I feel so sorry for my my, my good friend. Dr. Jafeth Cole, that's another name I'm throwing. I'm throwing the name out there. <laughs> but he, he lets me call him and talk. Well, a lot of times I feel so sorry for him after I get off the phone because I talk for like an hour. You know, <laughs> so sad. But anyway, 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 that's another story. But um, so I want to say thank you, thank you, thank, thank you, you so much, so much yes. for everyone who thank tuned so in. Yeah. And it's still not too late to hit that share button because we want to get the word out. Yes. Um, about this book um yes. so tell your friends tell um those that you know to go out and to purchase the book um delilah's wow mm -hmm. so you i will get a second name or the second number oh, um, the second book. Yeah. so i will like to give out so the 25 dollar oh, oh. gift card goes out to miss Teresa yes. willis <laughs> power yes you are hey, the Ms. winner Teresa, yes for um, the giver of a $25 gift card. Yes, yes, yes. Mm -hmm. You are the winner. And Congratulations. She, she, chose, <laughs> she chose one of my favorite um, um, posts. That's one of my favorite ones. That's the one I was explaining about. Well, I talked about having the, the approval. approval. Mm -hmm. Yeah, the approval to use um, the name. And um, that's yes. one of my favorites because, you know, I get to talk about, you know, my son. But any, anyway, that's, that's another story. I don't want to get carried <laughs> away. So, but anyway. Um, but yeah, congratulations, Miss Teresa. We will definitely, we, we don't even have to have her send nothing in. We know you. Know. <laughs> <laughs> yes, we, exactly we did. Exactly. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. Yes, yes, yes. We do have another $25 gift card yes. um, to give away. So, um, something yeah. else that we did. Um, fun fact. My husband also did fun facts. So I don't know well, actually, if, my daughter who did the fun if any of you have had the chance to um, look at our fun fact, fun mm -hmm. fact Fridays. And you can name just one fact about Terrence Devonsky Baker. You will also be the winner of a $25 um, gift card, gift card, gift card. Yes. So one thing, some um so while we're waiting on that person to put that in the chat um, before you go. So I've always known mm -hmm. that you've been a writer. Okay. Mm -hmm. You know, because I've, you know, I've been with you. We've been yeah. together almost, yeah. been yeah. married February, almost. February, 20 years. Yeah, next month will be 20 years yeah. married. And we've been and, together 23 years. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And so I've, you know, been with you and known that you're a writer. Mm -hmm. So how did you know? Because there may be someone watching who does not know what their purpose is mm -hmm. or how to tap into their yes. purpose or that gift yeah. or that anointing that God has given them. Mm -hmm. So if you can briefly go ahead and um, tell us about how you tapped in to know that you are an author, author because yes. you are an author. Um, <laughs> Thank you. Um, I, I, I will say it this way. Um, as I was explaining a little while ago about um, the thing that you do mm -hmm. that just comes natural to you. Mm -hmm. Many cases, this is where your anointing and where your um, your purpose is at a lot of times. And it took me to be almost um, took me fifty years to understand that. And and my wife said that 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 she's known for a long time. In the same way, I was just explaining to, about my daughter that um, she was just saying that something that she did um, before we left um, Franklin. Mm -hmm. You know, we was at um, when we was at um, the church called Holy Faith. Mm -hmm. Um, sometimes the, the pastor would say, you know, he wanted a play. Mm -hmm. And so I said, okay, I write a play. And mm -hmm. I would sit down and I write a play. Yeah. And then the um, pastor even told me one time he wanted a theme song for the yeah. church. I sat down and I wrote a theme song. Mm -hmm. I never viewed it as an anointing or a purpose mm -hmm. because for me, as the same thing I was saying about my daughter, it was just something that I did. Mm -hmm. And it's just something I knew how to do. And that's how a lot of times what's where we find our purpose and our anointing in, is in that thing that we do that just flows out mm -hmm. naturally. It's not something we have to uh, strain to do. Now, we look at other people that have to strain to do the same thing that we're doing that we do naturally. Many times, this is where our purpose and our anointing is at. So if you're looking for that, and for many years, I was that same person until last year. 
I was that exact same person that would see all my friends that I grew up with that were now falling in the lines of becoming a pastor mm -hmm. and they're becoming prophets mm -hmm. and they're speaking here and they're doing this in the name of God and all these different things that were happening in their lives. And I wasn't envious. I was just trying to figure out why can't I figure out what mine is? And it wasn't until last year mm -hmm. that it hit me and that I, when I started writing this book, it started to I started to understand. Mm -hmm. And that's when I began to understand that a lot of times God just weaves our anointing and our purpose so much so well into our lives that we don't even realize it's an anointing. Mm -hmm. So um, for that person who is still trying to figure that out, figure out what it is that you do naturally mm -hmm. and that you do naturally well. Mm -hmm. Nine times out of ten, this is where your anointing is going to be or either is going to be connected to. Mm -hmm. So that's why I would, um, would tell somebody who was still trying to figure out what their anointing is, look at what you do. Look at what you do naturally. Mm -hmm. And a lot of times you're going to find your anointing there. Amen. Good stuff. Of course I could just talk to you and keep talking to you, but we do um, we be talking to not to so labor your time. So my daughter, I got some if you could on. tell me. <laughs> Hey. Yes, Andre Bailey. Yes, <laughs> he does sing. That was on one of the Fun Fact Fridays. Yeah, yes, yes, yes. yes. So, Andre Bailey, yes. you are the winner of What's a twenty-five dollar <laughs> gift card. <laughs> that is one fact about him. And if daughter, yes. you could give me the very first person who logged in. Um, if you can find that to give me the very first person, because that person will be the winner of a signed autograph copy mm -hmm. of this book. Because as we promised that we would be given two yes. signed autograph copies of this book, as well as two $25 gift cards. So, Miss Teresa Willis, you are the winner of a $25 gift card. Tanya Jones, you are the winner of a signed autograph copy. And Andre Manley, you are the winner of a $25 gift card as well. So yes. I want to make sure we get their addresses. Yes, I, if you could please um, send me um, your addresses so that we can get those items out to you. Oh, okay. Oh, All right. Yeah. So my daughter has pinned it in the in the um, chat box where you can email us at info dot devons that's d a v o n s at gmail dot com. Mm. Congratulations yes. to and all congratulations to all our winners. And our very first person who logged in is is my neck tester. Is Joe and Russell? Are you serious? <laughs> yes, that's my mama, y'all. Of course, my mama gonna be number one. She, well, she didn't know she was gonna be number one. We didn't know she was gonna be number one. But the very first person who logged in was gonna get a free autograph copy. Um, yes, that okay. is. So Joe and Russell, Make yes, sure. an autograph <laughs> copy um, of Delilah's Love. Yes. So. Thank you guys Thank so, you so much, much yes. for joining in. So uh, we do not take it lightly um, <clears throat> that you tune in um, yes. on this live on today. And like I said, it's not too late to continue to share and just to spread the word um, about the Lila's Live. But again, thank yes. you so very, very much. Uh, you very so much, much for yes. tuning so much. in and yes. you'll be seeing us we do have some good things yes. that will be coming up um, in the works yes. that will that's in the making so yes. um, check out for our Facebook again you can follow Terrence um, under the brand of Devonsky, Devonsky yes. T. Devonsky on both Instagram and Facebook yes. so thank you so much thank for joining so much. and we love you yeah, yeah, I, I, hold on, I, before I go I, something I always wanted to do I love you <laughs> I love you. <laughs> I love you all. I love you. I've, oh always, I've always wanted to do it. I'm just saying. I got an opportunity. Yeah, I, I love you. No <laughs> but good night, you guys. Thank yeah. you so much. Thank you so you much. Have Thank a you. blessed week and a wonderful evening. Yes.